Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I am your host, Matt Spies, and today we are looking at Psycho 3, released in 1986. Psycho 3 stars Anthony Perkins, Diana Scarwood, Jeff Fahey, Roberta Maxwell, Hugh Gillen, Robert Allen Brown, Gary Bayer, Lee Garlington, Donovan Scott, Karen Hensel, Jack Murdoch, Kat Shea, and Juliet Cummins. Psycho 3 was directed by Anthony Perkins. Now, this one, um, just like the others, is not based on the third story from Robert Block in his Psycho Trilogy books. Now, this one is written by Charles Edward Pogue, and you may know his name from The Fly. That's one of his most notable writing credits as a screenwriter. Now, the music in this, whereas in the previous films, was more traditional music um, with, you know, the Bernard Herrmann and then the uh, Joel Goldsmith music from Psycho 2. In this one, the music is done by Carter Burwell, which uh, this was his first time ever trying to compose music for anything, because before that he was just a uh, musician. And uh, he, uh, he does a fair job on this one, uh, but his music is just I, I don't know if it fits within the um, Psycho universe. So, um, I, I gotta give Anthony Perkins credit for trying to change it up and give it, you know, a different vibe musically. Um, but I think it would have been more a smarter move, um, on his part in this film to have stuck with um, Joel Goldsmith on that music. Um, but to each his own. This film, as directed by Anthony Perkins, is quite a controversial take, um, especially from the first scene in which Diana Scarewood's character is a nun who has lost her faith and is basically shouting at the top of her lungs that there is no God. She's at the top of this tower and she is basically ready to commit suicide. Um, and has given up. The younger, more uh, sympathetic nuns around there are trying to prevent her from doing it, are trying to talk her out of it. And uh, this more older, more jaded nun comes along and is offended by the whole talk of no God and uh, tries to just force her to come and she pushes her away and inadvertently accidentally kills her. It is a shocking and uh, different uh, opening that you would ever expect to see in a psycho film. But it, it kind of works with the uh, plot line with uh, Maureen Coyle, um, Diana Scarewood's character in here. So she's exiled from the church and... Uh, She comes across Jeff Fahey's character of uh, Dwayne Duke. You want a ride? Or are you carrying the Olympic torch in that suitcase? Wouldn't want to lose you. Ah, don't worry about that. I ain't born again or nothing.
Dwayne Duke comes off as a really uh, cool character from from the get go. Jeff Fahey is a really good actor here, and and this film is no different than anything else he's done. I mean, he is always solid. And in this film, um, he is playing a really likable, but kind of sleazy, in a way, character. But he doesn't know about Maureen's uh, tragic past that she's trying to leave behind here. And he attempts, in the heat of the moment, in his car, when they're parked alongside the road, to put the moves on uh, Maureen. And Maureen uh, is offended by this and fights him off and jumps out of his car. Um, he tries to talk her back in. Give me my suitcase! Stupid bitch! You could have been coming instead of going. And, uh, leaves her there. Um, but, uh, in a lot of ways, you know, you don't, he doesn't know what this woman has gone through. So it's, you know, it's, it's, might be a reaction a lot of us might have went through with this, you know, picking up this really attractive woman in your car and, and, and the way this plays out in the film, the way that um, Anthony Perkins directs it. But um, finally, she gets into the town where Norman's Bates Motel is located. Um, she comes into the diner, and that's the first time that um, Norman sees her character. And of course, her name is Maureen Coyle, so on her suitcase, the initials MC is on there. And he's immediately reminded of Marion from uh, the original film, Janet Lee. And uh, the the visuals that Anthony Perkins comes up with in this thing, it just shows he, he had an eye for being a, a really good director in this. I mean, he does some really cool visuals in this, especially with um, the way he visualizes his mother. When he is talking to the actual dead body, of Emma Spool. It is unsettling, but at the same time, he puts it in a, in a frame to where, you know, it, it's all in Norman's mind. We know that, but it's freaky as hell, and it makes you feel like he's really talking to his mother. Um, so, well done on that. And he does the same thing when it comes to the kill scenes in this film, which there are uh, a couple of in this, and 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 it's you know it's um, the, the blood and the gore in this is it kind of rivals some of the stuff that we've seen in Friday the Thirteenth with how well it's executed. Um, but yeah, um, you have Cat Shay playing this cute little girl um, named Patsy Boyle who comes across his place and uh, unfortunately um, is murdered. And uh, you have uh, Juliet Cummins playing a character named Red and you, you might recognize Juliet Cummins from uh, Friday the 13th, part five. Um, but she uh, meets the same fate. She encounters uh, Dwayne Duke, and uh, after getting real sexy with him, he gets pissed at her and kicks her out, similar to the way he did with uh, um, Diana Scarwood's character.
Um, Norman ends up giving Duke a job managing his motel. I wouldn't mind filling in until you found somebody permanent. I just won't be staying around too long. No one ever does. And then Duke runs into this... And this is probably the most unlikable character in this film that I just don't. And she's, I guess, I don't know whether she's written as supposed to be sympathetic or not, but I just did not like her at all. And that's Roberta Maxwell's um, Tracy Venerable. Um, th th this reporter girl is such a bitch acting character. I just did not like her at all. Um, and... Uh, Eventually, her and uh, Duke end up uh, working together to try to uh, figure out if Norman is killing again. Norman, meanwhile, uh, falls in love with uh, Maureen. And um, almost looks like it's he's actually going to be able to have a normal life, possibly, with her. But, of course... Mother has something to say about that. This movie, uh, pretty well directed by first-time director um, like Anthony Perkins. Like I said, I mean he he got he's got a s visual style that is really good in this thing. He he put some really good shots in here. Um, so um. And, of course, we do have the return of uh, Hugh Gillen as uh, Sheriff John Hunt and uh, Robert Allen Brown as uh, Ralph Statler. But the guy just wants to be left alone in peace. Look, Norman Bates has had enough garbage dumped on him. Just leave him. Afternoon, Sheriff. Alone. And also uh, Lee Gerlington, who I didn't never mention in... Um, in Psycho 2, because she basically was just a little extra in the background for the most part in 2. And her character of Myrna, she gets a little bit more um, screen time in this one. Whoa, 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 now you're not going to stiff us, are you, Norman? And so it's, uh, it, it was nice to uh, see those three characters from Psycho 2 back in here again, especially Hugh Gillen. Um, there is one scene that I did not like with him um, where um, I don't remember if it's Patsy or Red that it, uh, Norman has hidden in the uh, ice um, chest and everything and um, Sheriff Hunt goes, goes over there to get some ice to uh, you know Cause it's hot, so he's, you know, using the ice on it on his uh in his mouth. He dragged the swamp. That's where he dumped the last bodies. Don't tell me my job, Miss Venable. Well, somebody has to. You're not gonna let him go. Despite all your glib insinuations, I don't have one iota of proof that he's done anything. Uh, just, I thought about that, and I thought, um, I think you would taste that. And also, when the blood was on your fingers, I think later on you would see that on your fingers and be like, what the fuck? You know. But it never comes back for anything. Um, and it just... To me, it made uh, Hunt look kind of stupid in this scene. And I, and I did not like that, that part of it. Um, but other than that, and uh, Roberta Maxwell's character in this. I, I think this is a strong entry in this series. So, my review of Psycho 3. I give this film an 8.0 out of 10. It is, in my opinion, it's not as good as the original or Psycho 2, because Psycho 2, to me, is the best in that series, completely. Um, 
but it is it is a good entry in the series and, and, a, and a really good uh, directorial debut um, by Anthony Perkins. But what did you think of this film? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help this channel out a lot. Alright, so we're still doing the threes. We'll be moving on to another one in my next video. So, hope you're enjoying this uh, collection of uh, third chapters in these films. So, anyway, hope you've enjoyed and thank you for watching.